Hello and welcome. In this clip I want to talk to you about primary keys, entity identity, and a new concept called weak entities. Weak entities are an extremely useful modeling technique uh, and they're very common in practice and so it's important for you to get a handle on how to do them, where they're, where they're appropriate, and what do they provide you. And to get you there, first thing we need to do is to provide a bit of a review on primary keys and identifying instances of entities. And I think an example uh, will help here. And this is kind of an old-fashioned example. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to keep talking about albums and songs because songs are going stronger than ever, but the concept of an album is sort of going away. But hopefully it's still familiar to you. And so we say uh, an album contains songs. Although i got to get in the, out of the habit of making those plural. Okay, so let's go over the cardinality really quickly. A given instance of an album is going to contain multiple songs, and that's straightforward. Uh, an album with one song doesn't sell particularly well. Uh, it's got a multiple song, so that's straightforward enough. But how about song? A given instance of song can be contained on at most one or at most many albums. This is an interesting question. And you might easily say the same song can show up, you know, I mean, uh, one of the more popular Beatles songs or Jimi Hendrix songs has showed up on 4,000 different albums probably, so this is certainly many. And we'll put a question mark here. Because that's the whole crux of weak entities is around this many. But for, for now, let's just leave it there and turn our attention to uh, keys and uh, establishing identity. Every instance thus far of what we've learned of an entity needs to have an attribute or set of attributes that uniquely identifies it, an instance of it from every other instance. Okay, and so typically, I mean, you can look for sets of attributes that are pieces of information you're interested in capturing anyway and use those. But what we often do, because you can't always be confident that a combination of, say, for employee, that their first name and their last name and their middle name and their address and their date of birth is going to uniquely identify them. One, concatenating or putting together th that many pieces of information is a big pain in the neck. Two, you can't always be certain. And as a result, we use synthetic artificial identifying numbers like social security number, like we could say song number, and just, you know, without it meaning anything, automatically assign every song a song number. And the sole purpose of this attribute will be to uniquely identify every song from every other song. Okay, and that, that's very standard for us to do thus far. An album we could have, maybe album name is unique, but we can be pretty sure it's probably not. So let's give an album number and this as well will have Every instance of every album across our universe of albums uniquely identified one from the other. And that's what we need, that's what we want, that makes us happy. So that this is the traditional situation. And here's the tie-in to weak entities. In the absence of weak entity modeling, this situation, you know, this ID, this ID, is absolutely positively what you have to have every entity must be uniquely identifiable across the universe of data from every other entity. But guess what? Sometimes that is not in fact what we actually want. And here's where we tie back into cardinality here. So let's look at a given instance of a song being contained on at most one album. Now you say that's not true and you're right, but suppose for sake of argument, a very legitimate and realistic argument, that we're only interested in song, whoops, I erased the G, we're only interested in song within the context of a given album. We only want to identify song within its given album. 
It can show up repeatedly across albums, and we just don't care. All we want to know is, you know, we certainly need to be able to uniquely identify the album, so this album number will stay, but we don't have to. I mean, imagine what this means. This means that every time we have um, Purple Haze, and let's say Purple Haze shows up, it could literally be on 37 albums. That is 37 individual instances of Purple Haze being uniquely identified. So you got Purple Haze being song number 01276142933722 and so on down to 37th time. And sometimes this can be useful having this big long list of unique identifiable unique uh, uniquely identified instances of purple haze. But if it's exactly the same song, what is this getting us? Why do we need to uniquely identify all these different instances of the same song? Well, what we could conclude, and what we often conclude, is heck no, we do not need this. This is not getting us anything except annoyance, and we don't want that. And if that's the case, then what you need to do is model the situation as a weak entity. So let's do exactly that. Basically, what a weak entity does is get rid of this identifier. It does not have a unique identification. It has only a partial identification. Okay, let's scooch down to my pre-configured unique ident or, um, weak entity. So here's the weak entity. All right, and this it's this part here that's the weak entity part. Let's get some terminology. Well, let's say album contains song. This is still many. This is one because this is an this is an integral part of our weak entity modeling. In fact, always, 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 this is going to have to be one, irrespective of what you're modeling. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a minute. Okay. So this is the parent entity right here. This is the weak entity, and weak entities participate in a weak relationship with their parents. Okay. Parent, parent cardinality has always got to be one. Okay. And I'll tell you why in a second. So song, we're saying we no longer have a song number. We're not interested in uniquely identifying every instance of a song from every other across our entire universe of data. We've decided that that is misguided, bordering on dumb, and certainly needless. So we still need, though, to identify each song from each other song within the context of a given instance of the parent entity. So to do that, what we come up with is not a primary key for song, but rather a partial key. We designate that by a dotted or broken underline instead of the full underline that we would give a primary key. And in this case, track number works very, very nicely for us. And let's give it a dotted line here and an oval. And there we go. So what we're saying here is track number is not unique. Every album in our database, every song on every album, is going to have a track one. Track one will not be remotely unique. It'll show up over and over and over again. However, any given instance of an album is going to have only one, one and only one, track one, track two, track three, track four. So what track number does is uniquely identify within a given instance of the parent entity. Okay, and that that's the crux of a weak entity. So let's talk about how we designate weak entity. Obviously, we're we're doubling the line around the weak entity. We're doubling the line around the weak relationship. That's what indicates weakness. And here we have participation that is full. 
it has to be the case that a weak entity participates fully in the relationship with its parent entity. Why is that? It would make a great test question. Why is that? Because the weak entity is relying on the parent entity for its very identity. Everything in our database, every attribute, or every record rather, needs to be uniquely identifiable. It's just that with the weak entity, we are drawing a line in the sand about the context within which it is uniquely identifiable. Because track number gets us nothing, no unique identification. Album number plus track number provides unique ID for song equals yay. So this is, you got to be able to have this. And the only way you can have this is to be certain that every song participates in the relationship being contained by an album. If you have a song hanging out by itself without an album, we have a track number for it that doesn't provide any unique identification. The whole basis for the relational model falls to pieces. And so we cannot have that. And thus, this has to be full or mandatory participation right here. And that's why this line is double. Okay. Similarly, we need to know the album with which a given song is associated. If we don't, then we cannot establish this happy unique identification situation. If this were n, we could not have this because then we would not be able to affiliate a given song with one and only one album and our whole model would once again fall to pieces. So another qu good test question or test problem is asking you to explain or identify the problem with this cardinality being anything other than one. Cannot fly. Mandatory participation here. Whoops. Let's undo that because I just made it unmandatory. There we go. And cardinality of one on the parent side entity. And so I hope that gives you some sense of the utility of a weak entity. I'm going to run through in a separate video two other really common instances of this, more common and maybe uh, more useful in the modern era than the album and the song. I think album and song is easiest conceptually, but so stay tuned for those two as well. Study hard, uh, gear up for the uh, midterm examination that we'll be having next week, and I will see you online.